Hi, I'm Lowell Martin and you are watching MCC Today. Thank you for joining us. On today's show, we have Deborah Nettles, Beth Calderon, and Kathy Parker. This is going to be one to watch. Here at MCC, I've done things I've never thought was possible, never imagined. I've had one-on-one -on -one experiences with my professors. They've all helped. There's so much to do. We have a good sports program. Just a lot of things going on, and they, they care about students here. I honestly wouldn't trade my experience here for the world. I'm not close to being done yet, but I'm definitely on my way. I give all my thanks to Meridian Community College. Meridian Community College. Find your wings. And today we have one of my favorite people in the known universe, and that is Miss Beth Calderon. Hi, Beth. Hi, Lowell. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, uh, we've known each other for 15 million years Just here right. at Meridian Community College, so tell everyone what you do. I'm a Spanish instructor here at MCC, and now I'm also the advisor, and you're also the co-advisor with me for our newly founded Student Government Association. So. And what is it we're supposed to be doing with the Student Government Association? Well, there's so, you know, the <laughs> possibilities are limitless. But our main thing is we're just going to be a voice for students to be a liaison to, you know, administration and faculty and staff. So we're starting some new activities, but we've got one exciting promotion going on, hence why I've brought my tools today. But, um... <laughs> promotion of school spirit. Let me do our little plug here that we have our new uh, MCC logo on these beautiful metal car tags. I like these. Where it's going to be like the roving billboard so you can drive all over town. Do you all see this really good on the camera? I hope. But anyway, we're really excited about these. I think this will be fun. But we've got a lot of exciting activities going on. But this is what we have starting today. So if you're interested in these, you can contact uh, Lowell or myself. And I'm at extension 846. And uh, we can get one of these to you yes. immediately. So yes. this is very exciting. And the Student Government Association, we're also very uh, deeply involved with Special Olympics. Yes. And because that's a, a cause that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, and we have some activities uh, going on both the end of this semester and next semester. I'm just, I'm very excited about the Student Government Association and what we will be doing with them. But as a Spanish teacher, now, I, and I, I, one of the reasons I wanted you to, to come on the show is to talk about, you know, why it might be important for people to take Spanish. Because you teach Spanish 1, 2, 3, and 4. I do. Okay. I do. And I've done this. This is now my 22nd year at NCC teaching Spanish. So, of course, that's near and dear to my heart. So, of course, I think, you know, it's very important for everybody to take Spanish courses. And, you know, it takes a long time to be proficient, fluent in the language. But even just with those basic courses, it teaches you so much about other cultures and I think it makes you more open and, and tolerant and understanding to you know knowing how long it takes other people to learn English when they come to this country but it does open up doors for communication with people that you might not have been able to do that with before. And a, a lot of majors require absolutely. a language component. Absolutely okay. and then here too we have smaller class sizes which makes it easier for you Definitely. to learn and I can give more individualized attention in the classes uh, which I think helps really make that foundation stronger in those beginning courses which is very important to your progress in learning the language. So, you know, I really hope more people will take advantage of that they of should. course and take Spanish with me. And Absolutely. in addition to uh, the SGA, Student Government Association Advisor, and uh, being a Spanish instructor, there's something else coming up. I yes, think, well I'm really soon. here to brag on MCC with um, Duh. I know, it's just okay. it's, it's such a wonderful place to work and a wonderful place to be, but the community service that our students do I think mm -hmm. is amazing. And we have My College Cares coming up next week on Tuesday. And so uh, I'm a member of the church, the Episcopal Church of the Mediator. And this year we have our 50th annual barbecue. And I'm talking about this on the show today because MCC is actually vital to our success. And in the 50 years that we've been doing this, and all profits go back to the community, and we've already given back, they've calculated about 475 thousand wow. dollars to local outreach you know and that affects our community but this will be uh saturday october 26th we have a freezer bake sale uh from 10 to 2 and then on sunday october 27th from 11 to 3 we'll be serving pulled pork plates and fried fish plates 
Uh, we also have Boston Butts for $30, and we hope people will come out for that. But what I want to talk about is what our MCC students do to help us. Because like on Tuesday, the students will come with me, they help, which may seem not that important, but they help prepare all that sauce that we put with the 1,500 plates we serve. How much sauce do they prepare? It's about uh, 35 gallons of sauce and putting all those in individual containers. They prepare all the foil that has to go to wrap all these ham. We have these huge pits that we cook everything. Um, they do a lot of prep work. On Saturday, the baseball team comes. They unload truckloads of stuff, which the men in the church are appreciative beyond belief. <laughs> <laughs> the tennis team comes, they serve plates, they pull pork. I mean, and then we've had other students just come and faculty members that come and help. So it's just amazing how much MCC students, athletes, faculty always come and help at so many local community events. And it's just this one particularly, of course, is near and dear to my sure. heart. But all of my church members are always talking about there's no way that our church members are getting a little bit older. And there's no way that we could continue to do that without the help of MCC and I think a lot of people just don't realize how involved we stay in the community and it's not this, you know for just volunteer work and I think it's really a beautiful thing and it's it so really great is. that our students realize how important it is and they're always so happy to volunteer and happy to work and they do such a fantastic job and all of the money goes back to the community every all penny of none of it is for for the church every bit of it goes to local outreach it's all for uh, the local Meridian area. So, you know, places like Wesley House, Carroll Lodge. Um, it usually there's about, um, I think it divided last year between about 10 or 12 organizations. And last year we had a profit of about $18,000, which is, you know, excellent, substantial. It helps. Every, every little bit helps. Well, now I hope you will come back and tell us, uh, you know, how everything went or how everything goes with the uh, 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 Barbecue. Absolutely. I hope this year we hit 20,000. This is our and, 50th. And, and the selling of the tags. Yes. And you standing so, in the parking lot. Getting yes. Ready to I'll be ready to do it. So <laughs> just, you know, let me know and I will run to your vehicle and uh, put it on for you. And, you know, I'm already driving around my car proudly with my tag on the front. So I hope people will uh, join in. But thank you so much for uh, talking to me this morning, Lowell. It's I, always a pleasure. I appreciate it, Beth. All right. You have a fantastic day. You too. All we'll right. be right back. Thank you. Meridian Community College Arts and Letters Series is proud to present Annie Jr. The show begins Saturday, November 2nd and goes through Sunday, November 3rd in the McCain Theater. For tickets, visit our Eagle's Nest Bookstore or call 601-518-3502. Audiences of all ages will be charmed by the plucky Annie and her never-ending positivity against the cruel Miss Hannigan. Call 601-518-3502. And we have uh, Miss Deborah Nettles. She is here today uh, to t talk to us and uh, grace us with your presence. I'm so glad that you were here. <laughs> Thank you. Glad Deborah. to be here. Now, you've, uh, now, I've known you for a very long Forever. time. I think mm -hmm. I've known everybody for a very long time. Uh, but uh, you are the uh, student, uh, the career and retention mm -hmm. advisor. And so tell me a little something about your job. Okay. Um, as career and retention advisor, it's fun because you help students find out what they're going to be when they grow up. So, you know, a lot of them come in the door and they know what they want to be, but some are really, they don't, they're not sure. Mm -hmm. So we help them find out what they want to go into, what career, um, and then we tell them about the classes they'll need to take. You know, some come in and they may say, okay, I want to be a doctor, but then when they find out how much schooling goes into place, we kind of, you know, have to make some changes. So we make sure that the career plan follows what they want to do. So it, it's fun. I tell students all the time that, you know, it, it's better to, if you don't know what you want to do, you know, come here first because it's cheaper to come Good here advice. and not know what you mm -hmm. want to do than it is to go to a university and not know what you want right. to do. Right. But uh, we have a few things happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, first off, we're at midterms. We are at midterms. And this is the middle of the semester. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my students, I'm like, uh, this is the time when you start making some realizations. That's true. And uh, one of the things you realize is perhaps in some classes, you know, might not be getting the grade that you want to get. But, um, you know, also it's a, it's a, a way to see uh, how well you're doing. That's true. You know, when good midterm grades are coming yes. out. That's true. And you still have an opportunity, as I say to students, you still have an opportunity uh, uh, to make some improvements if necessary. That is true. Okay? That is to true. help them make improvements, 
you've got some things you know uh, on the agenda right we have some seminars coming up okay. and it's based on the midterm which is what you just talked about eight weeks behind us eight weeks in front of us mm -hmm. so um, some students we find out you know they don't know how they're doing until that midterm grade comes out so like you're saying it helps the student it helps the teacher know okay well what do we need to do do we need to change something but we've got seminars coming up October 28th and October 29th what, what's the seminar about uh, what seminar, kind of seminar is it? it is study skills and test taking okay of course a lot of the students they come they know how to study we find out you know they've taken your class you teach college study skills yes. they know how to study but they forget then what they need to do so we review a lot of the things how to study when to study where to study you'd be surprised they study everywhere but yes. uh, we how tell to them not procrastinate there you go and how to stay focused okay so we teach them that. one of the biggest things is you might know what you need to do but actually doing what you need to do is difficult that's true and I was just talking to a young lady this morning and I said you know you, we get into these patterns mm -hmm. and every you know you're given an assignment and you're like oh I, I, I don't need to do that now I don't need to start that now I can wait till later and before you know it later's up that's right and, and the night before the test is not the time to study okay. or turn in a pa or write a paper <laughs> or write a, or paper. Write a speech right right okay so what you now tell me the dates of the seminars mm -hmm. again October 28th which is that Monday we'll do two sessions at two o'clock We'll offer a session, it's just about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. And then we'll offer a five o'clock session that would be for those that are working during the day or maybe if they have night classes, they can swing by that seminar before they go to class. That's gonna be in Castile Gallery. Okay. Then on Tuesday, on the 29th, we'll offer another one at two. So October so, 28th and October 29th. And, October 29th. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times, many of the classes, many of the, uh, uh, I know some of the science classes will give extra credit That's true. for students mm -hmm. to go there, and uh, uh, some of the, uh, I believe, psychology and sociology right. and do as well. And some of the student organizations, so we thank them for that. Okay, so in addition to uh, study skills seminars, okay, we, mm -hmm. we have something else coming up. We have something else coming up. Because you have a full plate. We do. You have lots on your plate, many, yes. Many things on my plate. Um, we have new class spring class registration coming up so that part you know it's exciting of course we're talking about midterm but we got to start planning for january right so this is a time when the students come in we talk to them about their spring schedule the classes they'll need to take and how to keep them on track okay <sighs> always how do you do all the things that you need to do many things Fun. if you could just as far as the study skills and as far as advising and trying to keep students what would you want to tell students is important for them to do or to know. Uh, what, could, any advice that you can think of at the moment to give? A lot of advice, but a lot of it goes back on planning and okay. having goals. If they know what they want to do and where they want to go, that helps us know how to help them get there. So that helps us. And some come in, of course, they don't really know, and we kind of have to talk it out. But even if they don't know, they need to try to make sure that their mm -hmm. grades are good. That's true. And sometimes, the, I know quite a few students I've talked to recently, and they had no idea what they made in a class until they get that midterm grade. We see that. And they're absolutely shocked yeah. by, and they're, you know, how did this happen, you know? Right. And I talk to students all the time about, you know, just simple things like, have you read your textbook? Mm -hmm. You know, and they'll say, well, I studied this and I did this and the student, the teacher gave me this. And, and I said, well, did you read your textbook? No. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I found your problem. Right. We see that even the first day handout, some of them don't read that. And then we'll say, well, okay, your grading skills on your first day handout. And, you know, it tells about how many absences and things like that. So reading is mm -hmm. important. And then also with EagleNet, we have everything they need on their EagleNet that kind of helps them keep track of everything. But do they keep track of it? That's where we come in to remind them, okay, go check that. This is what you need to do. So we, we're like coaches, kind of helping them along the way. I hope you come back later and tell us how the uh, seminars went. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Because usually you have a very good turnout. Yes. I've okay. noticed that because you always send out a list of the students who, who were there. And many of them I'm, I know, to, you know, I know mm -hmm. because they were you know, in my classes. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell them, I'm like, look, we talked about yeah. this. And I thank you we for telling this. them to come. So that part helps Oh, yes, too, always. Well. Anything you. that, you know, we're here for the students. Anything sure. that will help them. And we want to keep them in the class. Yes. We want keep to get them, them to MCC. finish. That's where they need to be. Yes, they need to finish. Not just, they need to finish here. Here at We're MCC. the best community college in the known universe. I agree. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you're going to come you. back and see us, right? I'll come back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Meridian Community College Arts and Letters Series is proud to present the MCC Jazz Band. 
Join us for a night of big band and swing style music under the direction of Carrie Smith. The show begins November 14th at 7 p.m. in the McCain Theater. The jazz band will also perform with special guest artist Don Black. The show is suitable for all ages and admission is free. Don't miss this evening of exciting music located on the MCC campus. And today we're here with Ms. Kathy Parker. Now, you are the Associate Dean of Institutional Effectiveness and Academics. Right. Oh my goodness, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You meant condolences, right? Well, <laughs> yes, yes. Now, you are here to talk to us about uh, Marini Community College's Quality Enhancement Plan, our QEP, mm -hmm. okay? Can you tell us what is a Quality Enhancement Plan? So a quality enhancement plan is exactly that. It's a plan to help us enhance the quality of education that we're offering our students. We want to make something better for them. Okay. Um, it's designed to either affect their student learning in some way or maybe the learning environment that we have on our campus. But regardless of what we focus on, we just want to find something that our students need and that's going to make education better for them. Now, why why is it important? Why should we have a quality enhancement plan? Why is it necessary for us to do this? Well, I think it's twofold. Okay. The primary reason that prompts us to do it is our accreditation. Okay. Which so means we've got to. We have to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have, we, to, we have to have accreditation. Okay. So um, it's part of our accreditation standards, and we're coming up on our reaffirmation. Our 10 year reaffirmation is in 2022. Okay. So it's just part of that process is that we have to develop a QEP and then we'll present it to them for approval for them to say, yes, we think that's gonna help. But more importantly, I think it's a good thing for us to do. It's just a, a best practice. It's a way for us to affect student learning and like I said, just make things better for them. Find something that they need help with and find a way to help them. So we're looking at what we're doing and we're seeing how effective what we're doing is. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when you say the, you know, it's important to our accreditation, this basically means that uh, and we need our accreditation, number one, to be able to get student aid. That's right, okay, financial aid. Financial aid, but also to make sure that the classes that you take here will transfer to other uh, colleges and universities. Absolutely. Okay, so, if, so this is why it is so important to us to make sure that we do it and do it correctly. Uh, what was our last plan? Our last plan, we were addressing computer skills of our students as they came into college. So when they're freshmen, they come in, a lot of students know how to use technology, but they may not know how to use software on a computer, because those are two different things. Mm -hmm. And so we really identified that we had students coming in trying to take English Comp 1 that did not know how to set margins in Word or things like that. They didn't know how to use attach those software. Attach a file. Yeah. Right, or attach a file to an email. Yeah. And so we identified that as a weakness that we could address with our students. And so we now have a computer lab that our students can come to and get help with those types of skills. Okay. Now, what, what do you need the community to do to help with this new quality enhancement plan? So our old plan had to do with uh, computer skills. Mm -hmm. So now we have to formulate a new quality enhancement plan. How, what's the timeline for, for uh, uh, getting a new quality enhancement mm -hmm. plan and what do you need or what do we need from the community? So I do want to say first that the what we'll call the old QEP um, is still there. We're sure. renaming it the Commuter, Computer Connections Lab so that it's still a service because it was something our students needed so that doesn't go away. We mm -hmm. start that, it doesn't go away. But now what we need is we need input to figure out what we need to address next. And okay. so on our website, there is a link to go take a survey to give us feedback on what the community thinks our students need help with. Okay. And what kind of timeline are we looking at? So we have to have the complete report written by the fall of 2021. So we're, right now we're just sort of in that very early stage of collecting those topics. And so that survey will remain open for about two weeks and we'll get that feedback. Okay, so the, the uh, report that you're writing for 2021, mm -hmm. that's based on the new QEP, the yes. new quality enhancement plan? Yes. So we have basically this uh, until then, how long will it take you to write this? I'm sure it's a very short report, right? <laughs> Two pages, three pages? So, yeah, no, and, and it's an ongoing process that involves a lot of people. Okay. Um, we'll ask our faculty here to do some research as well on the topics we get back, identify best practices, and how we can best serve whatever topic is chosen. Okay, okay. Now, how long have you been doing this? 
Uh, I started in 2009, so 10 years. Okay. What have you learned by doing <laughs> so the, much. The, the QEP? I mean, I would think uh, that By you, the QEP or, or doing or this institutional This institutional effectiveness. What mm. have you learned about our, our, our community college or just uh, community, college in, community colleges in general? Well, because the, our accreditation touches every part of our institution. And so I've really had to at least have a surface knowledge of everything that goes on in our college just to, to kind of be able to write about it because the QEP is written, but then we also have our decennial report that has to be written. So it's, it's a lot. I think one of the things, and, and I find it interesting because you, I teach a college study skills class and I teach it in the classroom and I teach it online. And I remember having a conversation with you and you're like, okay, you have to make sure that what you're doing online is exactly the same as what you're, the, not exactly the same, mm -hmm. but, but the, the, the outcomes, student out outcomes or goals are exactly the same as in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And it made another instructor and I, we had to really look at what we were doing and making sure that we're doing the same kind of things in the online as in the uh, uh, in class. I mean, just mm -hmm. one of the of the things. Just as I said, just in a passing conversation you and I had, and we're like, okay, we're going to need to change this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, but that's we're going to need to do better. Like, but that's that's what it happens. Is it makes us look at what we're doing and makes us a better institution because we pay attention to those things. But also, I just say too that. I can't do my job without the support of everybody like like that. Like y'all are willing to do what it need what we need to do to be in compliance and that makes my job easier. So you need input from faculty, you need input from staff, from students and from the community to help right. get a good quality enhancement plan up and running. We do and we have sent out surveys to faculty, we've sent out surveys to students. So now our focus is the community. Okay. Now, once we have the quality enhancement plan, in hand. Will you come back and, and let's talk about it? I will, but I'll bring Stacy Parks with me. <laughs> <laughs> and she will be thrilled, I'm she sure. She will. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here Thank today. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Looking for a better future? Meridian Community College can take your education to new heights. Join us for the Eagle Experience and see the view from the top. Tour around campus, hear from our award-winning students, talk with instructors from many of our incredible programs, and find out what it's like to be an Eagle. Join us Friday, October 25th at MCC. Learn more and pre-register at www.meridiancc.edu. Meridian Community College, find your wings. Our students have been out and about, learning stuff, videotaping stuff, but they're on a paleo diet, so they can only eat what they can catch. Be careful. The 2019 Eagles soccer season is coming to a close. Both the men's and women's have fought very hard this year. The Lady Eagles record is 2-11-1, led by sophomore Skylar Spears. They have scored 22 goals this season. The men's soccer team's regular season record is 4-8-1. Freshman Jack Davies leads the team, which has scored 24 goals this year. Both the men's and women's will be finishing up regular season play October 18th at Itawamba Community College. This has been Roger Griffith with MCC Today Sports Update. Wheel floor signs. Usually, when you see a wheel floor sign, you ignore it and go on about your day. Well, today, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't do that. The wheel floor sign is commonly used to signify well, wheel floors, be it from a result of routine cleaning, accidental spills, product leaks, or weather conditions. Proper use of a wet floor sign clearly communicates the hazard and reduces the potential slips and falls. Careful consideration of the following issues increases the usefulness of the signs. 1. Color. Wet floor signs should use a color that increases visibility. The color yellow was designated by the American National Standards Institute to signify physical hazards and indicate caution. 2. Use of icons and images. Using images and icons on signs increases visibility and comprehension of signs. Number three, language. Signs are available in many different languages. Take your audience into consideration and use multilingual signs as necessary. And four, location. Unused signs should be stored out of sight, yet easily accessible. The best practice is to store signs near entrances and other locations with known temporary hazards, such as beverage stations, ice machines, water fountains, and restrooms. When in use, signs should be visible from all directions. This has been Running Days with MCC Today. Hi. This is James with your MCC update. Interested in STEM careers? NASA retiree Gene Goldman will be on campus October 23rd, speaking in the McCain Theater at 2.30 p.m. The lecture will focus on the future of STEM careers. 
For all you art lovers out there, come to the MCC Miller Art Gallery to see art pieces by Susan and Tom Naraki. MCC has always been a strong supporter of our nation's veterans. This Veterans Day celebration is set for November 7th. In the Graham Gymnasium, we invite the public to attend. That's it for your MCC update. Join us next week. I'd like to give a special thanks to Matt Milner, our executive producer, Josh Taylor, our media consultant, and Tristan Scarborough, our student producer. A special shout out to our new viewers from the Dominican Republic and the third moon of Beetlejuice. I hope you've learned something. Please stay tuned next week.